Good evening to all of you who are watching live <laughs> and uh, who are watching live and also will be watching the recorded version. I hope you can uh, hear me. Uh, so basically, without wasting any more time, we have wasted 20 more minutes. So without wasting any more time, let's be done in our 30 seconds round on time. Hello and good evening, everybody. We are on the 69th episode of our continued medical education program organized by National Institute Alumni Association. Whatever may be the business scenario and situation, we are not going to stop the CME. Uh, I'm glad to announce that uh, today our backstage editor, Alpha Mukherjee, is birthday. But though the young medico is celebrating his birthday along with his family and uh, friends, but still the CME must go on, the show must go on. And uh, to inaugurate tonight's show, we have our dynamic assistant secretary, Dr. Mohammed Naim. And I request uh, our vaccine editor to bring on screen Dr. Mohammed Naim to inaugurate and carry on with today's program, tonight's program. Welcome, Dr. Naim. Yeah, now, thank you, Dada. It... Yeah. Thank you, Vidada. First of all, happy birthday to Arko. Arko, you did a great job by arranging all these things. And good evening to everybody. I'm proud to inaugurate 69th CME. And this is conducted by Alumni Association, NIH Alumni Association. Myself, Dr. Naim from 7th batch. Today we have Dr. Dev Narayan Kalyani from 3rd batch of DIP NIH. And he is also president of NIH Alumni Association. And he will talk about his experience with the uh, journey of 300 cases of degenerative joint diseases, which he had seen in NIH and he has done many research on this. And secondly, we are with Dr. Javed Iqbal Dhar from Jammu and Kashmir, and he is MD from NIH. And he is also a senior medical officer from government of Jammu Kashmir. And he did a lot of OPD in his uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir job. And he has a compilation of this uh, uh, chronic sinusitis cases. So. And our moderator today is Dr. Nirupma Mishra, Deep NIH first batch. And she's also, uh, she was also assistant director, homeopathy and scientist three from CCRH. So I want to hand over further proceeding to Dr. Nirupma Mishra and she will see and conduct next proceedings. Ma'am, are you there? Hello? Hello? Are you there, ma'am? Yes, I'm there. Are you there? I'm there. Yes, I'm there. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, handing over further proceeding to you. Kindly okay. moderate okay. the whole okay. process. Okay. So okay. since you have already introduced Dr. Javed, uh, I will not say any details about him and I will invite him. But first, I think uh, tomorrow is uh, uh, World Homeopathic Day. And at least we should exchange some greetings on this account. And uh, let me speak uh, uh, two or four lines, uh, at least for the World Homeopathic Day. Hanneman had said that a true consciousness of mind and uh, um, good health, these are two very essential features of life of a human being. And uh, consciousness we get from our self-study and love to God. And good health is provided by homeopathy. So today, I think it is more than two centuries back. It is uh, uh, he, uh, when he uh, declared his principles of new principles of medicine. Today, now the world has arrived 
where there is personalized medicine, precision medicine, and homeopathy. Like the, these thoughts are so akin to homeopathy that uh, people are feeling that yes, now a time has come when we will be able to explain homeopathy to something. Uh, understanding medical microbiology because we had a very good article in our e-journal first copy in December 2022 from Dr. Somit Hazra and he had written very nicely about uh, um, a few pages about uh, microbiology and microbiome and now these new therapeutic approaches which has come uh, which when, when they are modulating this microbiome to a person's uh, individual need according to his disease and his uh, um, um, uh, reactions. Uh, this, this has opened the door for precision medicine. Now people are talking, uh, new, new age thing is personalized medicine. And this is uh, exactly not like homeopathic individualization, but at least still we now get hope that some of the answers like there, where there is a, uh, uh, every human being we know reacts differently and the answer perhaps lies in this microbiome which are the reasons for this inter-individual variability. And I will share here one of my experiences with the audience uh, where there was a very interesting study done by NASA, a genomic study um, by NASA and Stanford University together on astronauts. And these were two twin brothers. So one brother went to the st uh, space station and the other brother stayed on the earth. And for six months, the one brother who stayed on space and the other brother who stayed on Earth, on um, that was a six-month period. And entire study was everything, whatever they did, some um, parameters were kept. They were studied. And to amazement of the researchers, everything, nothing was similar. They even they reacted to coffee differently. And how I know is because my daughter was a lead scientist in this project. And it was my first uh, genomic study for the astronauts. And it was really uh, interesting to hear from her how they were reacting differently. And now I went to think, I think about it. I feel Hanuman was so much ahead of his time. Like he thought about this individualization and intervariability, uh, variability among all the individuals uh, more than two centuries ago. So let us today is the time to pay homage to him. And every individual homeopath, I feel, have a stake um, in the future of homeopathy. So let all uh, we, uh, let us all take relook at our ourselves and take a pledge that we will follow his uh, the path shown by him, or with perseverance and the principles of homeopathy, we will follow. And a day will come when we will be able to look into the eye of the scientist and explain what homeopathy is all about with conviction in our mind and clarity in our thoughts and in our language when we explain that. My greetings to all of you on these days. Thank you very much. And uh, now I invite Dr. Javed to present his uh, 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 speak on chronic sinusitis, his experiences on this subject. Dr. Javed, please, over to you. Hello? Dr. Javed, over to you. On the screen, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everybody. First of all, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Neopo Mr. Ma'am, for your uh, successful effort to put my slides on the show. It would have been very impossible if it, were, it would have not been done. So again, a very heartful thanks for this. Secondly, I would like to extend my greetings for the World Homeopathic Day, which is going to be celebrated tomorrow worldwide. Uh, Dr. Kalyani sir, Dr. Dhirupama Mishra ma'am, Dr. Mukherjee sir, and uh, Dr. Naeem. Good evening everybody. So today my talk will be on chronic sinusitis. And why I have chose this topic, there is a reason behind it. So if you can help me out to uh, play the slides. For the next one, it's next. So I had a reason for this topic to be presented today. Let it be 
first from my side what why why i have chosen it because i had my son suffered chronic sinusitis for at least 15 years since from my childhood up to i i just uh, joined homeopathic course at ludhiana it was very tough to survive with it because it took a lot of toll on my life i could have been a better student if it would have not been there so ultimately it was a homeopathy that took to care of my sinusitis and i got rid of it and i was all right with all the headaches that i had suffered for the last 15 years so this was the first experience of my my side from my side of the homeopathy second one as you uh, as uh, evident on the screen you can see sinusitis is our uh, is one of the most common illnesses that affect a high proportion of the population sinusitis is the fifth most common diagnosis for which an antibiotic is prescribed that's the reason why i have chose this topic because uh, we don't give much of the importance to this while maximum of the our ch children suffer from sinusitis and they suffer in their studies because of the headache they are having because of the sinusitis next slide ma'am please so definition you, uh, you are all right you know uh, sinusitis inflammatory condition of mucous membranes of the paranasal sinus next so epidemiology if we go through 134 million that is approximately 14 crore indians suffer from from yeah, the sinusitis more than the population of the japan acute sinusitis is not taken in the uh, account it is only those people who are suffering from the chronic sinusitis more wide spread than diabetes asthma or coronary heart disease in india next slide next so literature uh, if you go through the literature for the paranasal sinus there are four peer air filled spaces that surround the nasal cavity that is why they are called paranasal sinuses because they are around the nasal cavities next so here we can have an anterior view as well as a lateral view of these four sin uh, paranasal sinuses that is maxillary bilateral on the nasal cavity uh, frontal ethmoid and one of them is situated within the cranial cavity which is called saphenoid sinus next no physiology production of mucous membrane is the function mucus drainage air flow both air uh, flow and mucus ends up in the nasopharynx air is then breathed into the windpipe and lungs while the mucus is swallowed what is the physiology physiological function of these so functions remain that uh, decreasing the relatively uh, relative weight of the uh, front of the skull and especially the bones of the face because they are air filled so there is no weight it gives a lighter lighter this uh, 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 this it keeps our head lighter increasing resonance of the voice providing a buffer against the facial trauma because when there is air space you can it can save our our, our vital organs in brain and this face from the traumas insulating sen uh, sensitive uh, structures like dental roots and eyes from rapid uh, temperature fluctuations in the nasal cavity so it is also an insulating that 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 uh, that prevents excess of heat or cold to enter into the uh, uh, these uh, vital structures humidifying and heating of the inhaled air because we, we, what what the function whenever we breathe uh, we breathe air they exhale that's humid and warm that keeps the oxygen that we inhale humid it's uh, humid and warm so that our lungs can not be affected by the cold air next next slide out okay. so uh, etiology what is etiology factors for chronic sinusitis we had nasal infections swimming and diving trauma and dental infections dental infections especially of the upper 
dental structures because they are closely located uh, below maxillary sinus. Any dental uh, infection or uh, that abscess can lead to the sinusitis and it must be taken into account while treating a dental pain because I had myself suffered. The uh, dental surgeon was uh, treating me for the dental dis uh, the pain whether while, while I was having the sinusitis. It was a it was the pain that was from the uh, 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 infection of the sinus, not from the dental side. So it's very must whenever you uh, you, you you get a pain in your dental uh, this upper upper this dental structures, you must rule out sinusitis. Next, ma'am. So predisposing causes. What causes? What are the causes behind the sinusitis? We are, we are, or what we have to rule out before treating the sinusitis. So the cause is very much. If you don't remove cause, it will remain there. Symptomatically, we can give relief, but patient will not be cured. So the main, may the main causes for the chronic sinusitis is nasal polyp, deviated septum, turbinate hypertrophy, nasal packaging. These are the mechanical causes that can be removed and patient can get rid of the sinus. Stasis of the secretion in uh, nasal cavity. Previous attacks of sinusitis. Environmental pollution, overcrowding, poor general health. Next, ma'am. So, infections, common cause of this acute sinusitis is a viral infection. 0.5 to 2% of the cases of acute viral infections, sinusitis will progress to the acute bacterial sinusitis. Number three. Mm -hmm. Now, the most common bacteria which are involved in causing the chronic sinusitis, Protococcus pneumoniae, 20 to 43 percent of the cases are from this bacteria. Hemophilus influenza has 22 percent to 35, and Maxillary morgula has 22 to 10 percent of the cases. Next, ma'am. Uh, now, what is the pathophysiology when this infection happens? What are what what, what are what is the, what are the series of events that occur within our nasal cavity or within our sinuses? Membrane swelling or infection. Swelling causes blo blockage of already narrowed passage because of the inflammation. The passage of these sinuses, which are draining into the nasal cavity, they get narrow, and there is accumulation of the mucus that is uh, that that is infected with the virus or this uh, bacteria. That causes inflammation of the membranes that are covering the sinuses. Production of extra mucus. Because of the inflammation, more rush of the antibiotics towards the, towards the site of infection causes more accumulation of the mucus. Accumulation of extra mucus and infection results into the in pressure changes and causes pain. So whenever there is more mucus, there will be more pressure. When there will be more pressure, that will cause pain. That's why there are pressure-like pains in uh, paranasal the, the maxillary region and Frontal, uh, this uh, this front, uh, frontal headache. Next, ma'am. So this is how this is caused. You can see this is this is some uh, this is uh, the uh, this is the picture of the inflamed nasal signs, swollen bases. Next, ma'am. So uh, classification uh, is according to the location of the sinus. As I already mentioned, there are four paired sinuses: uh, maxillary, ethmoid frontal and sphenoid so whenever whichever infection whichever this uh, sinus is affected the pain will be localized in that particular area in frontal headache we have frontal this uh, sinusitis is sinus infected infected if it is at the root of the nose then we have ethmoid sinuses if it is in the front of the head then frontal sinuses if it is within the skull then it is because of the sphenoid sinuses and uh, next ma'am So we can classify sinusitis into uh, uh, three categories, acute, subacute, and chronic. Uh, acute is uh, going uh, on less than four weeks, subacute four to 12 weeks, and chronic going on 12 weeks or more. Uh, manifestations, uh, Myosmums or fungus balls may be asymptomatic or may manifest as chronic sinusitis. This is a fungal infection that can remain within the nasal cavities. As we already know, 
that fungus is a part of our body it is sometimes asymptomatic 40% of the, our yeah, this 40% uh, of our people in their gut have this candida fungus which is not causing any damage or which is not causing any symptom because of the high immunity of the body so fungus can repel sometimes within the sinus without any symptoms next one so clinical symptoms next so clinical symptoms remain facial pain or pressure especially over the area where the sinus is affected feeling of fullness or pressure in the head office going headache this there must i must uh, remember one of the uh, one of the seminars i had put in the nih during my stay at nih uh, dr basu sir hod medicine uh, while 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 commenting on the seminar has uh, has made a revelation at that time that i started to remember and i took it in the diagnosis of the headache that whenever you had a patient from uh, suffering from morning headache you must first of all rule out, rule out sinusitis if the patient is having evening headache you must go for the ophthalmologic checkup or eye, eye, eye checkup to rule out any cause so maximum times morning headache is caused because of sinusitis and evening headache is because of the eye strain why morning headache is caused because of sinusitis because when we are lying these sinuses they don't drain the more accumulation of the pus or more accumulation of the mucus remains within the sinus which causes headache in the morning because we are lying so there is less drainage from these sinuses that's why we are calling it as pus going headache tenderness above the above behind or uh, below the eyes so whenever patient is suffering from sinusitis you must press his these 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 parts below eye or uh, in the frontal region of the head or uh, on the maxillary side whenever you press it he will feel pain pain so these are some uh, some 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 of the clinical clinical tips that that can help us uh, to diagnose a case of uh, sinusitis aching in the upper jaw i had already uh, said that upper jaw whenever there is pain in upper jaw you must rule out before going to a dentition you must rule out sinusitis runny or uh, stuffy nose next man clinics in a cough especially at night morning why morning let's uh, let's see what, what the reason behind it because whenever we are lying the mucus secretion from the sinuses which are inflamed that accumulate within our this pharynx sorry yeah this uh, nasopharynx or i uh, this uh, upper part of the nasopharynx or this uh, laryngopharynx whenever we uh, uh, wake up in the morning we had a accumulation that is called post nasal drip we had a accumulation of this pus in the in our in our oral cavity and there is cough this that is called reflective cough to uh, get it out from the oral cavity that's why we are having morning cough aspect whenever we had a patient of the morning cough we must rule out this sinusitis it could be because of the post nasal drip up because of these the sinusitis sore throat because of this infection that is draining into the uh, this uh, uh, or this nasopharynx then oropharynx then uh, laryngopharynx that can cause sometimes sore throat or pharyngitis fever malaise body ache especially in acute acute in, in acute sinus sinusitis we had these symptoms because there is much bacterial load or viral load that causes generalized symptoms a uh, body ache fever or malaise halitosis bad breath could be there hyposomia or anosomia there could be loss of this uh, smell or decrease in smelling power next ma'am next ma'am so physical activities as i already said ki we must palpate on the parts which are adjacent to the sinuses next yes this is one of the test we can do in clinical setup in a dark room especially we can put light on the upper part of the maxilla and uh, ask patient to open his mouth we will see a clear cut light this this uh, this reflection of the light within the oral cavity if it is not there then there is a this is a this is a sinus congestion which is hampering light to pass through so this could be one of the uh, examination we can do while, uh, while 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 we are we are expecting a case of sinusitis next ma'am yes uh we can we can check for the oral cavity for condition of the dentition so sometimes a dental abscess or dental uh, infection can 
cause. For that reason, we have to see the condition of the uh, uh, dental structure. Post-nasal drip, and, uh, and, as I had already mentioned, that patient might be having the post-nasal drip, oropharyngeal arrhythmia because of the infection. Dental caries may be present, especially in upper jaw. Next, ma'am. Next, ma'am. So, uh, nasal endoscopy, we can do. There is a nasal endoscope that can be put in the nose and we can look for the different structures with the nose or sometimes within the sinus. Next, ma'am. Ocular examination is very much important because the frontal sinusitis, ethmoid sinusitis can sometimes lead into the ocular symptoms. Next, ma'am. So diagnosis criteria. There is, the, 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 there is a criteria that has been adopted for the diagnosis of the chronic sinusitis. In 1996, the American Academy of the uh, Oro, or Rhinology, had a neck surgery. Convened a multidisciplinary sinusitis. This group defined adult sinusitis diagnosis criteria. These 1996 uh, diagnostic criteria required two uh, major factors or one minor factor and two minor factors or one major factor. So major factors in the diagnosis of the chronic, chronic sinusitis remain facial pain or pressure that already has been explained, nasal obstruction or blockage, nasal uh, discharge, discolored post-nasal discharge, hyposomia or an anosomia, uh, Prolence in the nasal cavity, fever for acute sinusitis. Next, ma'am. Now, minor candidate criteria remains headache, fever, halitosis, fatigue, dental pain, cough, ear pain, pressure or fullness, which has already been explained. Next, ma'am. So, investigations. How to rule out or how to investigate and uh, get a clear cut diagnosis for the chronic sinusitis. Uh, for imaging, we have x-rays. CT scan and MRI. Next, ma'am. X rays with different views. Next, ma'am. Now, we have to be very much uh, uh, accurate while we're taking an X ray. Uh, we had four views for this uh, to see the sinuses, whether they are infected or not. We have four views, and they should be taken accurately because whenever these, uh, these, these technicians take these views, we don't get the exact picture of all the sinus. So first of all, it's called water view or occipital mandibular view. You have to keep your skull 40 de degree, 40 degree bend on the back side so that we can get a clear view of the maxillary and frontal sinus. Sometimes what we do, they are taking direct x-ray and the, uh, the sinus are overlapping each other or this orbit is overlapping frontal sinus, and we, we cannot get a clear view. Here we can see, it is typically taken on the, we can see on the uh, right of the screen that right sinus is congested, and there is clear cut right maxillary sinus, where whether the left has clear air in and this normal. So we can see the frontal sinus also. This picture has been taken accurately as per the water view. That means the 40% per, uh, uh, this, this, this uh, uh, head has been bent 40% vertical to the body. Next, ma'am. Second one is occipital frontal view. Here we have to take a view whether, uh, because we have to see, uh, we can see also these um, uh, ethamoid signs also. Here we have to take a view at 40, 25 percent, sorry, 25 degree of the body axis. Next, ma'am. Third one is later, where we have to look for the saponoid side because saponoid signs we cannot see in the frontal views like occipital mental, mandibular or occipital frontal view, waters or Caldwell view. We can go for the this uh, uh, lateral view to get, have a, a clear cut, clear cut view of the frontal side. You saw this saponoid signs. Next, ma'am. And third, oh sorry, fourth one is later oblique. If you want to look for ethmoid signs clearly, we have to take a lateral. Oblique. This must be mentioned when we are expecting or we are suspecting the patient from the current, this sinusitis to get which sinus is involved 
for that reason we have take these views into the consideration and especially prescribe for these views next ma'am so this is a ct scan remains a uh, very good uh, diagnostic factor because we have got we, we are getting slides 5 ml slides so minutest infection within the sinus can be uh, what from the what from this uh, this view from the ct scan itself next ma'am so mri remains a well defined criteria for diagnose this uh, this uh, sinusitis but we have to be very much cautious regarding it because it is hypersensitive so when there is something that is hypersensitive that gives less specificity so maximum times we avoid mri for the because mri is mostly for the this uh, soft structures but when we are going for the, this uh, this sinuses they are bony structures so ct scan remains a better option than mri thank next so blood test like uh, for cystic fibrosis as we know uh, the sweat test remains more important because we do to see the level of uh, fluoride within the sweat and uh, uh, bacterial infection ke liye humko blood test lene padte skin test uh, to identify the specific allergens endoscopic endoscopic uh, nasal evaluation uh, a bacterial culture of sinus flu nasal cultures and smears for biopsy next uh different diagnostic criteria uh, we have to uh, see for allergic rhinitis benign tumors of the skull base these are the differential diagnosis that we have to keep in mind while we are looking for a chronic sinus this should not be ruled out juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma malignant nasopharyngeal tumors malignant tumors of the uh, nasal cavity malignant tumors of the sinuses do you know uh, uh, cerebral mucomycosis a sino nasal manifestation cystic fibrosis that has to be ruled out that can be a, a genetic genetic related or we can go for other tests turmeric dysfunction next ma'am so what are the complications of the sinusitis that have to be taken into the mind so orbital complications intracranial compli complications mucosal osteomyelitis and uh, facial cellulites sub periosteal abscesses next ma'am So this is the this is this 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 can be this can be a, a complication of the ethmoid sinusitis. Patient can have orbital cellulites. That is because of the lamina papyracea. It's it's a space between 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 your this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, eyeball cavity and the nasal cavity. Why from infection can invade your eyeball? Next one. So intracranial complication can arise from both acute and chronic sinusitis it is associated with a high incidence of morbidity and mortality because we know that it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a vital structure for whenever infection reaches our brain that can be fatal so cavernous sinus thrombosis this could be one of the complication of the chronic sinusitis because we know the cranial nerve third fourth fifth sixth they run through this uh, this uh, the cavernous sinus and whenever they are the cavernous sinus sinus thrombosis there these nerves can be affected and that can that they can cause the relatively their uh, pressure effects and uh, the structures supplied by these nerves can be affected cavernous sinus thrombosis i told subdural epyema pass can be accumulated within the sub uh, dura intracerebral abscesses and meningitis next one this is how the thrombosis of the cavernous sinus can affect your these are the nerve structures that they are passing through the this uh, this cavernous sinus along with uh, other structures like uh, next so these are some pictures that are uh, that are for the uh, this uh, diagnosis of brain abscess next uh, subdural empyema this this is the view how what you get from especially during ct scan if patient is suffering from such things next one meningitis could be there next one so let's come to the management part now next one so management uh, generally uh, we have to be specific uh, we can we can take some uh, uh, steps to avoid acute attacks of the uh, chronic sinus sinusitis that can uh, ultimately uh, get rid of the chronic sinusitis which are we are having because so we have to avoid smoke 
smoke can cause sometimes you know sinusitis especially one one uh, patient who is suffering from the chronic sinusitis can get aggravated from smoke avoid allergens as we already know allergy is one of the main cause of the sinusitis so we have to be very much uh, very much cautious regarding the, uh, the substances that are causing allergy to us steam inhalation steam is the best option for the uh, pain of relief uh, pain get plenty of rest and drink a lot of water put warm compress on the painful areas next ma'am so medical management broad spectrum antibiotics are used i had already mentioned that uh, maximum antibiotics uh, next ma'am so endoscopic surgery remains sometimes better option when there is uh there, there 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 is a blockage of the sinuses uh, and we can we can uh, open them out with endoscopy and doing syringing and cleansing the sinuses that remains sometimes when there, there there is no other option so frontal sinus drainage can by burr hole which is a surgical procedure <clears throat> and there is a pass within the frontal sinus that can be done by the burr hole surgery brain abscess is drained after craniectomy next ma'am next ma'am so homeopathic treatment next ma'am chronic sinusitis covers all the miasms but predominantly is showing soric manifestations at maximum times next ma'am next ma'am so some of the medicines that i would like to mention here arsenic alum remains a good option with the symptoms that have been mentioned thin watery excoriating discharge nose feel stuffed up sneezing with out relief hay fever and coryza worse in open air better indoors face swollen pale yellow agitated sunken cold and covered with sweat tearing needed like pains burning circumcised flush of cheeks next ma'am so belladonna we know that belladonna can remain a better option especially in case of acute sinusitis where red hot swollen shining was a motion of the muscles of the face which is one of the symptom i had already i tell you to told that uh, there is uh, tenderness about the area where uh, which sinus is affected next ma'am hypersal when there is too much sensitiveness especially uh, uh, physical as well as patient is very much uh, sensitive especially to the cold air and to the touch as, uh, especially so we can uh, uh, smell like old cheese which is mucus next ma'am kalibai has been extraordinary a remedy that i had prescribed during my stay at state anh and i had got very good results with the kalibai especially when you don't get some uh, mentals you can uh, uh, prescribe on the physical ones and kalibai has been the most successful remedy for those patients where mentals were not very much visible and i had i was supposed to to send on the yeah, this uh, these physicals kali bhai has done a great job actions of any mucus membrane with discharge of tough stringy adherent mucus which can be drawn out into lung strings long string sorry no remedy has this uh, more prominently than this one but kali bhai produces and cures this kind of discharge from nose mouth post and pharynx linings next ma'am mercury when when the when the patient has a chronic and there is uh, uh, especially there are, there are ulcerations or all, all other things when the, uh, pay, the remedy is indicated as per the symptoms and symptoms usually remains much sneezing sneezing uh, in sunshine sunshine nostrils raw ulcerated nasal bones swollen yellow green fitted pus like discharge coryza acrid discharge but too thick to run down the lip worse warm room pain and swelling of the nasal bones and caries with uh, greenish pitted ulcerations nose bleed uh, in at night copious discharge of corroding mucus coryza with sneezing sore raw smartic sinusitis worse damp weather profuse fluent next ma'am 
pulse ties with, uh, can be one of the option next head rest is next so i am going through quickly because uh, next speaker has also also to speak next uh, spicula we can see uh, now repetitive approach we can uh, go th if we go through kent i had chosen some of the rubrics from the kent repetitive next ma'am head heaviness forehead frontal sinusitis head pain forehead middle frontal sinuses chronic croiza arsenic kali by spongia slicia thuja eye pain extending frontal sinus spicilia nose cataract cataract to front sinuses arsenic berberis calcarea cuprum perum kali by kali clone kali iod lyco merk <coughs> merk iod nax pulsula sanguinaria silicia chicta thuja so we can see kali by coming at, uh, at so many places nose fullness sense of frontal sinuses kali by nose discharge copious from posterior nares uh, carbovage urethra spicilia nose discharge copious with uh, stuffing of head aconite calcarea kali iod nitric acid nux vomica next ma'am so these are some of the symptoms that uh, we can see from nose uh, discharge posterior nares and we are also boric next ma'am so boric has symptoms like nose pain in pressing in frontal sinuses jerusalem agnesia iodum uh, kali by kali iod merk nux vomica no sinus cataract of frontal sinuses next ma'am robin murphy as we know typically on uh, physical symptoms sinusitis infections that is kali by lyco pulse thuja uh, silicia thuja cataract sinuses hydrastis kali by lyco medorhinum merk silicia thuja next ma'am now we have some research papers from the cch ccri sorry uh, open a multi uh, center prospective observation study was carried out by ccrh to see the usefulness of homeopathic medicine and management of chronic sinusitis during the period next ma'am second one one more uh, uh, open clinical observational study on the usefulness of the pre defined homeopathic medicine in the management of the chronic sinusitis was carried out by ccrh in october 2005 to 2000 march 2009 next year so uh, these were the studies that were carried out and they had shown a, a, uh, encouraging results i had my own study regarding the chronic sinusitis that will be presented, presented in the next uh, seminar sorry this slide has wrongly gone to the uh, into this thank you so the uh, this i when i uh, i i had my study that will be presented in the next seminar regarding the chronic sinusitis how uh, that that's the observation study at nih uh, i could not brought to this presentation because it could have been, then it could have been a long presentation so before concluding my seminar i would like to thank my seniors to give me for giving me the opportunity to speak before the stalwarts of the homeopathy i i am not that much of the uh, of the caliber that i could be before you for presenting this seminar but still you had uh, uh, shown trust on me that is very greatness of you second thing uh, i was not at home i am not at home this time uh, i could not say no because i want to grab this opportunity so as sir has already uh, mentioned in the uh, in the beginning of the seminar that show must go on go on so show must go on i am staying in the hotel at uh, i had just come from the allens i had uh, admitted my daughter there i told them that i have to be on the show so showing thank you thank you dr javed uh, am i audible am i audible Audible, 
You are audible, man. Thank you, Dr. Javed. Very detailed account on uh, chronic sinusitis. Not only chronic sinusitis, you also talked on other one as subacute and acute also. Uh, one thing is there, we have to know our scope and limitation. So when it is causing meningitis and abscess and other serious things, or there are sometimes comorbidities, uh, immunodeficiency disease, uh, these things we have to realize as clinician before taking any uh, cases of chronic sinusitis and all that. And even though it does not have mortality as such, but it has a lot of morbidity because of this obstruction and all this oxygen level comes, then quality of life becomes poor because a person with headache and like you yourself describe your own case, how you suffered and you could not do well in examination. So that morbidity plays a role. And uh, um, that we have to keep in mind while treating the patient. And one thing which you did not mention was uh, some, there are some like, uh, uh, there is a SNOT 22 score uh, where they measure like whether it is mild or moderate or severe, but that's okay. And uh, something on myasm, I think uh, we, uh, uh, we could have talked because repertory, whatever symptoms you have mentioned, we get uh, different kinds of all discharges, uh, different kind times, uh, stuffiness with timings and etc. Inflammation, whether it is cateral or dry, and all these symptoms are mentioned in repertory and materia medica, whether there are crust or not, or without crust and everything. So myism like speaks of something uh, like if a smell is uh, cheesy, it is a uh, pseudosora or syphilitic or something, or it is fish brine, then it is psychotic discharge. Also, if it is green and blackish, then it goes for syphilitic or if it is uh, yellow and uh, yellow greenish, then it goes for psychosis. So the, before making prescriptions, we have to keep these things in mind. Finally, because when we treat chronic sinusitis, we have to give constitutional treatment to the patient. And miasmatic background at that time becomes important. And uh, indicators are these symptoms uh, apart from other features. Thank you, Dr. Javed. Uh, now I will invite Dr. Debnar and Kalyani. He has to, I, I, he, uh, last uh, CME, he presented first part of his uh, uh, degenerative joint diseases and his uh, second part is due. So uh, I hand over to you, Dr. Kalyani, to present your, make your further presentation. Uh, thank you, madam. Yes, please. With heartiest pronoun to our master handyman. Yes. Greetings to World Homeopathic Day. And over and above, we are really highly encouraged by getting our respected DD, one of the best possible alumni of NIH. Being the moderator of the CME, we are really very much encouraged. We are lucky rather. And the rest of the speakers, moderate, uh, you know, good return, everybody, viewers. Today is the second phase of my presentation. I'm very happy, rather lucky that CME committee has given me a chance to present this degenerative joint disease, what I have experienced with NIMS. Today is the second phase. As we have seen in the last CME, that wearing and tearing of the joints is degenerative joint disease, and there are many factors. One of the greatest factors is wearing and tearing of cartilages the most buffering, the most preventive organ of joints. Today, we will try to concentrate to see such type of disorders, which is called to be incurable or uncontrollable. Degeneration of discs or cartilages is said to be by the conventional system of medicine or rather practice of medicine, orthopedics, that it is not curable, neither it is curable, nor it is controllable. But we are fortunate enough by the blessings of Mahatma Hanuman. We have seen in our in HOPD, they are not only controllable, they are curable too. During the study of degenerative joint disease of different joints, what I observed that it is the spinal joint, small, multiple, a little bit complex joint, which is very quick to act means 
symptom arises very quickly, sharply within a short period, and similarly, it goes off short, sharp, and quickly. That is why, as a beginner on this subject, what I concentrated that I will first see the smallest sensitive spinal joints. Then I will try to work on other joints because big joints or other weight bearing joints, changes takes time. This is my experience. So today I will try more on the spinal joints. Before going to the, this degenerative joint disease, we must know the situation. About 10,000 people, sorry, 10 million people are of India per year is suffering from this degenerative joint disease. Among them, majority of the cases who undergoes a massive operative treatment, surgical interference, is cartilaginous degeneration or disc degeneration. Why? Because the nerve roots coming out between the vertebrae, if they are compressed, if cartilages are destroyed, thinned or pulled out, slipped out, then directly on the spinal cord, if the slipping compression goes to the central canal or to the nerve roots, gets compressed, leading to tremendous complaint, tremendous pain and discomfort, not only in the neck and low back, but also in four extremities, which leads to sometimes emergency operation. And the operation is nothing but supporting treatment, usually some metallic setup is introduced by a massive operation to keep the affected area under rest and to maintain rest of the life under control. Never it regenerates. That is why my target is, I told you, that homeopathy, especially in Iran, our attention should be on those diseases which are refused, neglected, or their limitation. Homeopathy would only grow if we can cure the refused cases, means truly chronic disease is not being easily controlled by conventional system medicine or other system medicine. Degenerative joint diseases, among these, this disc degeneration or cartilaginous degeneration is one of the serious disease of vertebral cell. Now, before going to the subject proper, let us concentrate little or let us recapitulate little bit of the spinal setup. That is the disc setup. This is, we are all aware of it that spinal cord, cervical lordosis and lumbar lordosis being maintained by thickness of cartilages and due to certain purpose, I will tell you later on. And disc, disc spaces. Fourth lumbar has been shown. There is one nucleus of cartilages. This is the nucleus of cartilages, softer, and this is annular part of the cartilages. And between these, these nerves are coming out between the intervertebral disc. There is central canal. So, if this area, this disc degenerates, ultimately pressure comes over the nerves. And if this fits inside, then it gives direct pressure on central canal. Next is Another picture, annulus in the periphery, nucleus in the middle. This is vertebrae. This is the disc. Usually in the lumbar and cervical area, anterior disc thickness is more than the posterior one. This anterior thickness is more than posterior one. Clear? Next picture. See the spinal nerve coming out. This is the disc. And if the, it is compressed, this hardness of disc 
this is varnishing. I mean, this is coming out, keeping pressure on the nerve roots. Ultimately, there will be pain in the distal part where supply of this nerve is being maintained. Next picture is, this is spinal cord passing through. This is the intervertebral cartilages. This has become compressed under pressure. These borders have become irregular. What is happening? Ultimately, this space is reducing. It is creating pain and at the same time inflammation leading to a serious type of complaint. Many of us have seen patients coming with either tremendous vertigo or tingling in the hands or electric current like short pain, shoot up pain on the limbs, pain in the posterior part of the thigh that is along the course of the sciatic nerve and many other complaints. It can be easily assessed whether this is discompression in cervical or lumbar or not. Just ask the patient to sit erect by keeping the spinal cord in anatomical position. Putting sacrum, sit up on the backrest of the chair, ask the patient to sit erect. Then put your left hand on the vertex and give a thrust by the right hand by making a fist on the left palm, on your hand, back of the palm, keeping the palm on the vertex of the body, of the patient. If you give a stroke, if patient starts shouting, sudden shouting, in ask the patient, look at which area you got the pain. Patient will complain that I got a stabbing like pain in my neck. In this particular point, he will locate the point of disc degeneration or disc compression. Accordingly, we will find the area where it is supplied by the nerves of that particular intervertebral disc has been affected with different types of complaints, either weakness or burning or pain or inability to move. There is a complaint called as carpal tunnel syndrome. Usually it is sometimes due to less knowledge it is misinterpreted as a carpal tunnel without getting MRI or CT scan of the spine to assess whether these patients are normal or not. Similarly, if the patient tells that I got the pain on the lumbar area, stabbing pain by giving the jarking or stroke on the vertex, take it for granted, this degeneration has started to a good extent. It means it is already late, many days before it has started. Another experience and sign is calf impulses. Ask the patient to sit straight and ask the patient to cough loudly once or twice. The moment he will start coughing, immediately he will get a stabbing pain in the back. He will locate by the tip of fingers. He should ask him that locate the area by tip of the finger. That area, that vertebra has been affected. Or he will tell by this cough a sharp electric current like pain travels to anterior abdominal wall. The first pain by cough and pain on the vertebrae located by tip of the fingers is called as root pain. And the pain which is radiating from the back, from the lumbar sacral area to the umbilical anterior abdominal wall is called as a girdle pain. When there is root pain, like cervical spine and lumbar spine, still it is, there is chances. But when the girdle pain starts, means tremendous wasting of the cartilages, destruction of the cartilages, the condition is very severe, almost in the heart of a severe operation. What we are seeing in this picture, that cartilaginous tissue is getting disturbed, there is congestion, and this is the normal as I was telling that anterior aspect is thicker, posterior is thinner. Same thing, anterior thicker, posterior thinner. If there is pressure, ultimately this will come forward, anterior aspect. 
sorry this will give compression and it will slide back to the towards the posterior aspect and it will give direct pressure on the spinal cord which will create tremendous type of pain below the level of compression this radiological view it is clear the visible see the lumbar vertebrae see usually what happens in cervical and lumbar vertebra this intervertebral disc this intervertebral area which is packed up by the cartilages is supposed to be progressively increasing in nature that means from first l to second l the intervertebral disc space means the thickness of this intra vertebral area is narrower than the fourth and fifth space or the 51 l5 and s1 that means progressively increasing the space or thickness of the intervertebral space because progressive increasing of weight bearing mechanism what we are finding here that this this space and this space is much narrower than that of this one and this one so obviously there is compression the entire disc has been compressed maybe it has come out to some extent for this this compression intervertebral or root nerves coming through this point is compressed giving to distal pains this lateral view and the clear picture it is visible see how this has been compressed this has become compressed wider see this space is wider than this one so this is normal this space become much narrow and the vertebral portion has become highly calcified means there is injury persistent injury or trauma getting to hypercalcemic states irregularity of the bone is and see this space is narrower not than that but much narrower than this it was supposed to be much wider than this one means most narrow wider further wider more wider in this way lumbar vertebrae will come down this is another picture i see this this space has reduced make me alert this has reduced due to reduction the margins of the vertebra are getting opposed with the next vertebrae and getting calcium irregularity osteophytes and other complication this has become completely eroded or almost wasted next picture you see normal load of sheet it was supposed to be in this curvature means anteriorly con con uh, con convex posteriorly concave it has become exactly reverse at least as if the whole spine has become straight see this one this was this has become very much narrow and this has become very much wider that means the vertebral disc is trying to come out of this area breaking the normal uh, gap this are another picture how treatments are done in the intervertebral disc there are some steroid or some other medicines given for the time to get rid of the compress this is this part is compressed we are seeing as i was telling the patient by coughing will tell a particular point of pain in the area now if patient comes with all these complaints what we do is very we get one x ray immediately ap and lateral view if it is moderate if it is severe if we want to see the further details of the structure then ct scan if we want to see the not solved central canal and other things finer structures of the joint then mri accordingly we will diagnose this while treating on these things after getting few records recorded documents we presented this before the nih administration and that was published let me show you the publication in brief this is the published bulletin january 
let me read out a little bit that will make you make you easy to understand regarding the works after it was this is a documented fragment of ongoing research project not a complete research project a fragment portion of the research work on joint disease by the author chief investigator for last few years in the department of research in the of homeopathy these are for the formalities and the department of ayush minister of health and welfare government of india was done with assistance with the consultation of other allied departments of nih especially radiology this article will project only cartilaginous tissue regeneration by homeopathy means degenerated cartilages are regenerating this will be shown in this presentation and all the documents are properly certified by the radiologist of inside the nih and outside the nih introduction was simply research on joint and bone diseases are being conducted for years together under the author chief investigator in department of in different phases result have been published in previous bulletin as i have shown you last time and then so so during study for several years in it was observed that effects on homeopathic medicines are quicker and prompter in small joint diseases hence for last few years study was concentrated on weight bearing small to moderate joints like spinal joints or vertebral column about 185 selected out and in patient departments including as as per inclusive criteria of research protocol cases from thousands of opd cases of neck pain and low back pain were under clinical trial in here i want to tell you that number of patient we had to see many patient did not had any x ray before starting of the treatment they came simply for the complaint then we had x ray and had treatments majority of the patient they didn't turn up after getting the because the complaint because of the ignorance and uh, difficulty because they used to come from far distance and their level of it is low once they they get up their complaint they think that that disease is cured they don't come back as a result we don't get the x ray reports after complete recovery of the clinical features and after complete cure of the radiological features naturally with this all constraints we had to work for concerned spine was of compulsory inclusive criteria the cases were included in this project were compulsory inclusive criteria x ray during the course of clinical research many encouraging radiological changes have been observed regeneration of intravertebral discs of lumbar and cervical spines are among many changes in this article we will see how cartilages of four disc area sorry cartilages of intravertebral discs are cured by homeopathy this article will show about 165 documented evidences of 21 cases it is very difficult uh, for the time constraint to show all the report but i will present to you you will be able to see at any moment x ray plates and reports of 21 patients before during and after treatment was studied critically all the radiological documents presented here are properly certified by different renowned radiologists of kolkata both of nih and outside majority of the reports majority of the uh, kolkata in you know, majority of the reports are certified by our radiologist he was a very very nice person he helped a lot and encouraged seriously cordial dr k p nandi many of you would be knowing him mbbs dmrd calcutta radiologist and sonologist of nih kolkata in this article regeneration of intravertebral cartilaginous tissue of vertebral column especially cervical and lumbar spine has been focused by the following documents it will be observed that gradually intravertebral disc spaces reduction are improving and finally this become in normal state in addition to the 
space improvement, little other radiological improvements will also be observed. In some cases, complete radiological cure of spondylosis will also be observed. Readers are requested only to observe intervertebral disc changes, not on each and every radiological finding, because these are intermediate reports and not the final. Little information we got to some extent. This is radiological appearance. There are some formalities of publication that was given, but I will just go through the important indications. Radiological appearances. In addition to narrowing of the intervertebral disc, disc space, an osteophytic rim may be seen on the posterior margin of the vertebral body at the level of the cartilages, cartilage plates in lateral radiography. This rim can extend laterally to the intervertebral foramen and cause compression of the nerve root at its exit and from the spinal cord, particularly in the cervical spine. This may be clear, clearly seen in oblique views. Sometimes some subchondrial sclerosis and irregularity is seen in the surface of the vertebral body adjoining to these spaces. Lateral film taken in the, all the cases are taken AP and lateral views. Lateral films taken in flexion and extension many occasionally may occasionally show some slight subluxation and abnormal mobility. It should be remembered that the intervertebral space at the lumbosacral junction is anatomically narrow than a transition, transitional vertebra in present either sacralization of L5 or lumbarization of S1. As with this condition, the disc is often rudimentary. Such an anatomically narrow lumbosacral intervertebral space may be present even if there is no transitional vertebra. And one should always be aware of making diagnosis of this prolapse at this site without the additional evidence of osteophytes leaping or bone sclerosis. Then what I want to tell you, as we always try to emphasize every one of us, that homeopathy always, as Madam was telling to us, that in the district, at first, whole world is gradually, gradually tilting towards the individualization slowly. Hanuman, long, long year back, he concluded that each person is separate from all. Here also you see, research register number has been given in the first column. Following medicine, cure the cases depending on individualization. Type of cartilages, lumbar, cervical, 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 lumbar, cervical, See cervical, then lumbar, cervical, lumbar, lumbar, etc. Name of the patient was in brief. The drug. See the drugs. Causticum for case number one, two, medurinum, case number 34, lycopodium clavitum, 53, rastox, 72, natremule, 90, arnica montana, 110, bryony alba, 132, Ar agaricus. 136, diascoria, 138, hypericum, 152, again medurinum, 150, uh, medurinum, 155, 155, suja. Oh, sorry. There are both the areas, cervical and lumbar, also affected for 152 cases. This is the number 152 had lumbar vertebra, for the lattice. There are also many numbers given. And Sometime later, when it was found that he is suffering from cervical fatigue also, after a medium, suja was also given. And both lumbar and cervical, in two medicines, gradually gave us complete recovery, complete cure of the cartilaginous changes. Same for 155 and 155, cervical and lumbar, 
both cases suja was given sorry i am very sorry 150 to 152 surveillance line number both of them are both for both the cases the medin number the only drug was given and both improved case number 155 and 155 do surveillance line number suja was given for both the cases and it got cured 169 lumbar bryony alba was given 178 gelsimium 149 again gelsimium sorry 140 178 is gelsimium for cervical 178 lumbar same medicine gelsimium 149 rastos 151 bryony alba only 88 Only eight eight was rastos, one sixty two was semisifuga. So, document documented reports will confirm us. There is there is no shortcut of homeopathic treatment. We have to individualize according to symptom totality, according to the person under contribution, whether it is myasthenic or not. Only those drugs will cure the cases. Rest of the drugs might palliate. I told you that I had a trial with more than two hundred cases with hypericum rastos and bryonia with their shortcut treatment, simply depending on the modality and type of complaint. I told you before, only thirty-two percent cases gave clinical improvement. Not even a single cases I found radiological changes, any changes. But in these cases, conservative treatment of few hundreds of cases. We have seen that 85 percent, more than 85 percent, are getting clinical relief along with accessory complaints. More than 40 percent cases, they are getting radiologically completely cured, and a good number of cases radiologically partially improved. Next page, let me show you. This is documentation. There is one constraint because of the Difficulties of not having any scanner in our department. Simply, no camera in the department. Naturally, we had to depend simply on the personal camera. View box from the view box we took photography by the camera, and the reports were taken by same camera. That is why reports you are finding very black is dark. I will help you by giving that this was further dark because when it was submitted. When it came out at print, that means the press could not make it clear. Rather, it make more hazy. It become very difficult. But if you are very careful, if you see the bulletin, you will be able to see this. I will show you the report in more clear manner. This, as I told you, one after another documents. Case number is given there. Before treatment, after treatment. Before treatment, both anterior lateral view, AP lateral view, after treatment, AP lateral view. This was continuing. Before after view of one surgical case, if you attentively see, you'll be able to see the changes in the vertebral column. Next, we'll go to the documents. These are the cases. One after another, the case numbers are mentioned where reduction of cartilages was cured. This is the OPD card. First page. AP view, lumbar, lateral view, report by Dr. Nundi. Let me. Try to show you.
do you find this one her car is moving relatively reduce posterior disc space okay let me show you the next page after treatment ap view lateral view normal swing lumbar sacral spine loss of lordosis likely from back muscle sprain that means the entire osteological or radiological pathology has gone off simply the still patient needs medicine because by muscle spasm the normal lordosis is lost up to this level that is completely cured of this degeneration number one case next case name a little bit front page of the research paper anterior view lateral view of lumbar spine i think you are able to see the changes in the vertebral disc spaces this is the report of dr nundi see relatively reduced disc spaces likely 56 c6 c5 c6 okay next relatively reduced disc spaces l3 and l5 let us see the next picture this is reported after treatment plates and shear that's well the reports let me show you the reports articular facet see normal disc space you are observing at the normal disc space lot of loss of lordosis etc disc spaces between the l5 l5 and between the l5 and h1 probably vertebra so that be cervical vertebra disc space is completely vanished and if you compare the x-ray plates you will see the lumbar vertebra disc space is also reducing next case cervical ap view lateral view clearly visible the change the cervical spine as i told you the normal lordosis of the spine this supposed to be the this in this cart manner they become almost straight and see the vertebras osteophytic changes as i was telling the progressively the gap will increase but here this gap is narrow it become narrower than this one and this one lateral view then the report relatively reduced relatively reduced these spaces c4 c7 c4 to c7 means c4 c5 c5 c6 c6 c7 all the vertebras have become intervertebral this has become narrow that means there is degenerative changes in the vertebra uh, cartilaginous tissue after treatment ap view lateral view report it was done from outside by the patient see there is no disc space disc space is normal loss of lordosis marginal osteophytic changes disc spaces are normal this are disc spaces are normal one thing i want to remind you that one thing is fine loss of lordosis that means beginning and end of cervical spine degenerative joint disease is loss of lordosis first the curvature will be changed by the spasm of the muscle before beginning of the pathology and after treatment also once you get the pathology has been completely eradicated there is loss of lordosis when system is trying to keep the vertebral column in position by muscle spasm within very short time you will see this loss of lordosis will go off 
one more thing I want to tell you. There, there is one saying that this vertical degenerative joint disease cannot be cured without exercise. But especially, I tried to see the effect of homeopathy medicine, whether patient can be cured without exercise or not. You will surprise you know, you can try it of your own without asking anything about exercise. Simply restraining strain means don't carry overweight in your hand or shoulder or head. Means do not compress the vertebra between to compress the cartilages. This was only restriction. Without asking anything of exercise, physiology itself pulled up the vertebrae by muscle contractions to help the cartilages to get rid of their complaints and their recovery. This is another striking achievement by homeopathic treatment. You can try off your own. Next case, first page, AP view, lateral view. It is visible clearly that spaces are reducing this one. This is supposed to be more wider. This is one report from Dom Dom something. See, loss of loss of lodosis is a bit I have to dial it more. Here it is. This space, narrowing, narrowing of these spaces between C4, C6, C4 to C7. Lumbar spine. These spaces are normal. So here the cervical spine. Reduction of these spaces from C4 to C7. AP view, lateral view, see the reports by the same organization. These spaces are maintained. These, these spaces are maintained. That means cervical spine, this degeneration has been completely cured. AP view, lateral view, these are the reports. Relatively reduce these spaces C5 to C7, means C5, C6, C6, C7. AP view. Lateral view reports. Clear. Cervical spine, not this was PLS. Current is a rare sinuses, one report. Next was cervical spine, normal study by Dr. K.P. Nundi, our famous cardio uh, radio sonologist. Another case, first page, AP view, lateral view. This is reports. Let us see. Sarvika spine. First paragraph relatively reduce this space between C6 to C7 vertebra. Lumbar reduction of these spaces between L4 and L5 vertebra. Let us see what happens after treatment. AP view, lateral view. C4, 
से नॉर्मल स्टडी ऑफ कार्टिलेजेस नेक्स्ट लॉस ऑफ लोड से रिलेटिवली रिड्यूस डील दिस स्टील देयर इन लंबा स्पाइन बस सर्वे के स्पाइन इट हैज बिकम नॉर्मल इन डी को सेम दिस विल आल्सो बिकम नॉर्मल next case cervical spine relatively reduce this pressure between c4 to c6 when c4 to c5 c5 c6 after treatment ap view lateral view See that. Let us see the reports. Normal spine. That means cervical spine has become normal. Still, there are uh, some other pathology, subluxation in the lumbar spine. But cervical spine degenerative disc has become regenerated completely. Next case, lumbar AP view. Lateral view reports relatively reduced the spaces between L3 to L4 vertebra by Prof. Cornel Nandi. One thing by this way, I want to all of my friends, brothers and sisters, that this documented your cases means your case. recovery or your case has become cured is being certified by some specialist means i am not telling the case is cured by our medical name or whatever may be there but radiologist is telling that i have seen the pathology and i have seen there is no pathology means the case is cured this is very much wanted i told you before probably sala other same that world has become somehow convinced but everyone is waiting for documented cases let other specialist tell ministry or the peoples that yes homeopathy has cured this complaint that complaint whatever may be that is very much wanted so please request to everybody senior junior all whatever case you are seeing keep some documents from pathology laboratory radiology sonology to prove your recovery not only to prove your cure but also improve their confidence if you can cure few cases with records it will be confident regarding the cases that is you go on try your level best by repertory and materiality and etc definitely you will be able to cure all cases we have because you have experience that will view let us see the reports what i have observed during mother and child health campaign Previous bag by the Ministry of Ayush that people stop ranking officials of the conventional medicine, CMO, health ministers, and others of all the states of India. They are eagerly waiting to see that homeopathy is curing the cases with documents, because many cases they are constrained. They want that those cases to be dealt by homeopathy, while we are limited. See. Mild reduction of disc spaces between C5 and C6. Okay, next see the let us see the next report. Cervical spine. Oh, this is another case. A P V lateral view report. I am hasty because of the time constraint. You please see quietly in some other time. You will be able to assess how things are getting cured. See, relatively reduce these spaces to C5 to C7. Means C5, C6, C6, C7. Two intervertebral these spaces, cartilages are cartilages are reducing. Here also lumbar spine. Normal disc space, this cervical complaint only. Reduction of disc spaces of C5 to C7. Next report. 
after treatment. This is another case. So one thing I want to tell you that due to history, there may be some mistake. If you can, then you try to collect the bulletin published in NI. There, every picture has been given, but carefully you have to observe because of the printing defects. Lateral view. Relatively reduce these spaces between C5 to C6. Just a minute. Let me see the lumbar spine. Loss of lotus and reduce posterior these spaces through L1 and L4. Epilateral cervical, lateral cervical report, normal study. Normal study, still loss of lotuses in the lumbar spine is still remaining. But cervical has become normal. Next case, AP view, lateral view. Reports there is subluxation relatively reduce these spaces between oh sorry this L4 and L5 vertebra there are subluxation means in the vertebral disc is hanging forward and there is reduction of these spaces. It is view after treatment. Minimal posterior subluxation of the L5 is one. These patients are normal. Next case, cervical and lumbar. Let us see the reports. Cervical, this line, this patient between C5, C6, vertebra has reduced. Then in the lumbar, this patient between L4, L5 are reduced. Cervical epilateral, lumbar epilateral. Cervical spine, simply small anterior leaping of bone is there. Rest of the things are normal. Then the cartilage has become normal. Vidu, madam, uh, may I be given time or I will make it short by simply showing the reports. Anybody can see that one. This is epilateral view. Okay, let me make it shorter because it is already 10. Let me show you all the reports. Later on, you see report. Enlarging, you will be able to see all the cases in details. Simply, I am presenting before you by which you can see lateral and be convinced. These are reports from the outside. In all the reports, sometimes we can make a separate presentation of all the reports. And, um, uh, ah, okay, exactly. That would be difficult. Yes. So, simply, I am giving all the reports. Anybody can see lateral.
अच्छा जस्ट मिनट एक मिनट फिर फिर से all the reports i am sending to youtube anybody will be able to see that one because so many reports is very much time consuming and boring also these are all the reports for this generation uh, what i want to convince all of you that the serious diseases of this cervical spine can be completely cured so obviously other cartilage destructions in the knee joints other places where the most buffer is cartilaginous tissue and the supportive tissue of the joint can definitely be cured if time is provided and if proper treatment is done so with this without wasting time thank you very much for giving the chance to present thank you very much bye thank you madam thank please. you thank you dr kalyani it was really a very good presentation uh considering both the phases of presentation 300 cases so it, it takes a lifetime to make collection of these cases this is what homeopathy needs number of volume volume number of cases and to show the world that this what we can do and uh, uh, with x ray you have also shown with pre and post x ray cases 21 cases so i think uh, for statistical thing 30 cases are needed so even this 21 cases are very important even two cases we can show it is important so you have shown in 21 cases and uh, your presentation was so good your slides and everything because you have covered all the points so where homeopathy x quicker and where it is very prompt you have said in small joints it is working very well how to examine the cases then how to know that whether this is a Um, um, uh, root pain or a girdle pain, and uh, what are the difference between them? Kind of examinations, kind of pain patient will get, and um, uh, compression. Just I have one doubt: Can we revert a herniation with homeopathic uh, medicine? That is the time. I will show you later on subluxation. I will show. I have the records that even subluxation can be completely cured. Okay. The vertebrae are being pulled up by the muscles, and that gets regenerated. So, man, next phase. Uh, this will be very useful to the profession in the sense that uh, those who are man started practicing or those who are practicing, they will also know that yes, with confidence we can take uh, cases such cases we can take, and uh, particularly when it is working on spine because it is such an important area. Every other person we are finding that they have either a, a, a lumbar spine problem or sacral problem or cervical problem. so they, this is really very good presentation in the medicines you have not you have put pressure on all these things you have shown uh, this 21 cases uh, pre and post put so much labor into your work and i wanted to share something because last time you said that i we did not have any um, uh, though i i choose between teaching and research uh, but there was no facilities and nothing was for there for the research so i was wondering nih primary objective was teacher uh, teaching and research but while teaching us there was no subject called research methodology so when i was i also got a posting in a research institute i did not know what was research and how to go about it only it was like glorified word research that was in my mind and so we 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 were working just it was like data collection and everything and the protocols were very very primitive even though I, we have also worked on 40000 filaria cases but the uh, protocols were very primitive in the beginning then icmr people they found that this institution is getting so many filaria cases they came to us we learned so many things from them how to do survey and other things then after working for some time they asked me uh, uh, dr please write a paper we can publish it for the process and outcome whatever work we have done past one year so i was uh, very i was i was taken aback because i did not know how to write a paper during those days then uh, i i was delay delaying then after few weeks they they asked from their side that should we write then i said yes and that was that was uh, i mean from what their wrote i learned it but i did not have the courage to ask him how what you are doing and how do you do and there was no information age like no computers nothing 
only uh, and in a sort of small place like puri we did not have books then there were no funds to buy the books and all these things so i uh, 100% i understand what difficulties you must have faced when where there was no facility for research but uh, aside everything protocol science radiology everything a person who gets back who whose pain is relieved and he gets back a uh, some certain amount of quality of life he is able to move about in the house or he is able to do his work or he is not feeling pain while working in the office all these things are very very helpful and when patient comes back smiling to your clinic uh, that is very very rewarding and i think that is the biggest proof that uh, uh, homeopathy or we have worked or we have done something it, it gives tremendous sense of satisfaction to a doctor and when we look from research point or research presentation that is another issue but uh, as a patient to relieve all this case and such cases it's a great achievement i congratulate you and your paper that regeneration of cartilage i think uh, that you should have sent the paper to some like uh, homeopathy or some uh, peer reviewed journal because this is really something what homeopathy has done and uh, um, uh, a very mane um, what to say i will say it will we can prove homeopathy has worked here some there, there is nothing like you know not saying you know, not work because some radiological reports are there with you and all those things so th this was amazing work awesome work i really liked it and i think we are looking forward to your presentation again uh, those were um, report cases and other things and i think homeo myasm wise i i try to find out what we can uh, add here on myasm but your prescriptions are wholly myasmatic and uh, last time you had said rare yeah. remedies also and everything so i need not talk on that side uh, apart from appreciating your work thank you dr narayan uh, dev narayan kalyani ji bahut 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 very very thank nice present thank you we are very happy thank by your present this come and encourage us thanks yes it was it was worth i i think it was worth spending time with you all it was wonderful presentation and i i especially i made it a point to um, listen to your first presentation also Sli slides were wonderful and you covered each and every point that is most important next next, next is i will try to focus on uh, osteophytic changes osteophyte changes bone growth uh -huh. can be completely Yes, Anna, you yes, you take uh, that. Uh, um, yes, uh, like uh, uh, some cases only cervical spondylitis, and you give some cases or osteophytes, like you are saying, or some herniation cases like that. You make presentation. Uh, I think it will be very very useful to the profession and to homeopathy. And I will definitely look I'm forward to it. I will. I am looking forward to it. The second phase, third phase, I am going to ask you. जुंदरिफिकेंस importance of adenoids focal and descending infections for chronic recurrent type of sinusitis treatment uh, actually i am trying to get in touch with uh, dr javed he is out of station now at rajasthan mm -hmm. uh, i am not getting him to answer because he has worked on sinusitis he is the best person to answer uh, dr prabhu majumdar i think i will uh, will place this question to dr javed as uh, he is not over here and will request dr javed to post your answer to please ask this question again once this uh, video recording is available on the youtube over there and dr javed will answer it on that spot thank you uh, for asking questions and uh, it's an excellent session with all the speakers and uh, nirupamadi after so many uh, episodes we are lucky to have you on the 
I cannot restrain myself to telling the very very important things. One day, Dr. Kalima Bhattacharya, he was lion-like personality, pathology, famous pathologist of all over India. He one day carried one girl in the classroom. Anybody was scared to get into his class when the class starts. We used to yes. stay outside. We won't be able to. We were not there to get in his class while he started. Within the class, he took one. Girl in the classroom and asked her, "Do you know her?" So we are all name and mom. She is Niru oh. Baba Chandni. Yes, <laughs> I am proud of her. This was his voice before the students. A teacher of Punjabi student, teachers of famous institution of Calcutta. He is telling he was me one. Wonderful, he was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful teacher. He was a wonderful teacher. Wonderful and, and uh, high person. Uh, Dr. Kalyani, what he taught us, what he taught us that when a doctor comes, are you listening? When a doctor comes to your clinic as a patient, he told that story to us that when a doctor comes to your clinic for practice, uh, for a uh, treatment, please, please, please always attend to that doctor like your every other patient. You know, then uh, because he was a pathologist. But he was uh, he had opened his clinic and he was working in his I mean uh, he was working as a clinician I mean in his clinic he was practicing. Then one day a uh, father and son came. Then uh, that father is a doctor, but his um, identity uh, his father has uh, asked his son not to give his identity as a doctor. So he is taking now treatment as a normal patient from him. Then after a few days, uh, Dr. Bhattacharya felt something. So he asked, who are you or something like that. Then he explained that I am a doctor. He was 80 year old man. I am a doctor and I'm going from, I'm asking all my friends, calling all my friends over phone or going to them. But they are saying, okay, we will let you know. We will let you know. No one is treating me. So now I decided I will not give my identity as a doctor. I will go as a patient. And then when I pay fees, patient will the doctor, the doctor will see me. So he told us, never ever do like this. Whenever a doctor is asking you for right. any treatment for self, please, please respond. So these are the words of a great um, teacher. Uh, we cannot forget. When I, those the way we got teacher, good teacher. Teacher, you know, yes. I think one day we can make a session on the teacher, the teachers of NIH only that that, that would be one. Yes. Madam, that is a great, that is a great session. Yes, yes. We'll recapitulate our memories, sweet memories. Yeah, that will yeah. help our present students and teachers. Oh, all, all of us can contribute. Did this is a very great proposal, Madam is telling. Right. We'll set up a CME, huh? <laughs> commemorating the memories with the teachers. Exactly, sir. Session. For, for tomorrow, happy, happy, happy uh, homeopathic, World Homeopathic Day to everyone. Let us thank you, the master, and uh, find the session. Okay. okay. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for being on the session. And with this, with permission from our president, not to speak, Dr. Kalyani, sir, uh, I'm listening. And ending the session because uh, I am not going to, uh, to the backstage editor who is having his birthday tonight. And in spite of all the birthday celebrations, also was there to carry on with the session. So let's uh, sit. Great time. Happy birthday, Arka, and enjoy the remaining time with your mommy and papa, father very, and baba. Very nice, happy. <laughs> uh, God bless him. One minute, sir. Uh, let me call Ortho over here. He is with his... Uh... Ortho! Please be... Tatar. He is coming. And uh, tomorrow there is a program match. Tomorrow there is a program at National Institute of Homeopathy uh, where... Uh, one more uh, thing. The director has invited me to go tomorrow. Right. 2 p.m. Oh. Hello. Happy, uh, birthday. So Happy birthday. God bless you, Marco. 
May God bless you. Happy birthday. Enjoy the remaining part of the day with family. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Are you. Doing, you are doing great work for us. Yes. Really. Ah uh, yes, yes. he is very important for logistics. Without him, I think every time yes, I I yes, scheme yes. counting. <laughs> he he is behind the scene and dealing everything. God bless. Just he is his friend. He is an. Yes. God bless. Now he is everything you get. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me, man, sir. Yes. Of Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, with this, on the eve of World Homeopathic Day. uh we are inviting all our alumnus tomorrow at night where our director sir had invited our president to be there uh, so please those who are available please be there at night by uh, 2 pm sir tomorrow tomorrow 2 pm okay and thank you and we'll be meeting again on the 16th uh, no 9 and 12 on 23rd of uh, april for our 70th episode of our continued medical education program with the uh, third phase of dr devnan kalyani's uh, session along with an exciting new speaker and a set of moderators and inaugurator thank you good night and good night to you good night, good night. Thank you.